Good morning. Today is Monday, uh, November 21st, and the time right now in Singapore is 7.39 in the morning. Uh, okay, overnight on, uh, not overnight, um, on last Friday, basically the uh, US equity market uh, had a rebound, but before it rebound, market was actually down. So you can see that in the one hour time frame, you can see it's very obvious market opening down with a gap and then started to recover. But this recover is still very much tentative. I think that it's still uh, maybe premature to call for a rally beyond the 34,000. But the, but the odds are always there. But I, what I think the market will do is basically do another dip before it rally. So if you look at the one hour time frame, you can see that uh, this possibility of another dip is very much uh, in place. Uh, there is this possibility that I'm looking forward to, okay, that the market will challenge the 33,000 one more time. And if that's the case, I think this will be a great, uh, great level to look for buying opportunity uh, on the condition that it does not break through uh, in a very aggressive manner below the 32,500 levels. Okay, so I think 32,000, uh, 33,000 to 32,800 is a fantastic level to pick up some long position for the resumption of the rebound from the early October rally. Okay, over in the S&P 500, uh, the market also exhibiting the same kind of phenomenon. Yeah, the market actually attempt to rally on Friday, but the uh, the buying the buying interest wasn't strong enough. Uh, the market actually went uh, to test the 4,000 level, uh, just under 3,948, but it couldn't quite sustain. I think there's a possibility it will come back down again. And if it does, I think the level between 3,860 to 3,825 is a perfect level to actually consider taking up some buy position. I have some buy orders that are uh, limit order they are still in the market that has not been executed. Hopefully, I could I could get some kind of entry uh, if the price drift back into this level. Ideally, it drift. I don't want to have big, big move uh, to come down here. I think it drift lower will be perfect for me to see another rally. Okay. Over the NASDAQ, we can see the NASDAQ is also doing very similar act, uh, price action. Okay, market actually went down and then rebound. And uh, originally going into Friday's trade, I was actually short the NASDAQ for a short-term gain. Uh, for short term gain, market came to my uh, came to this level, and I think I hit my target because originally I was looking for this move. Okay, this move was this was all my expectation. Okay, so the market came into my price target. I took profit, and then I stepped aside. Market actually rallied. So now the market has finished a three wave. I think it's probably do, going to do another three wave. So uh, if there's a chance here, maybe you know, uh, this could be a buying uh, buying uh. A target price to uh, to consider buying, but uh, I am not going to choose Nasdaq for my next buy position. I'm likely to choose the S and P five hundred purely because on the idea that the Nasdaq actually is a lot weaker than the other two major uh, equity index. So my choice of instrument for the re uh, for the resumption of the rally from the October opening uh, is actually the S and P five hundred. Okay, so do watch out for this. Over in Asia, we can see that the market actually uh, attempt to rally on Friday, but did not quite take out the week's high at 18,414. And this high was traded at uh, Wednesday of last week. So the market may actually pull back. And if that's the case, the market may see another level of pullback to challenge last Friday's low, okay? Which is about 17,700 to 17,500 levels. So this is a good level to consider picking up some more because I think Although the market has already completed a five wave rally, so this this uh may develop into something else. Okay, so if you look at the daily time frame, this is a three wave rally that I talked about. The market has actually recovered back into eighteen thousand five hundred levels there about, and uh, for all we know, it could be developing into another pattern. Okay, we have a very simple retracement which hit target like I mentioned earlier on, but there is always a danger of the market uh, uh developing into an more complex corrective uh, rebound. Uh, the August high remains a level to watch out for. It's 20,281. So this is based on the cash index. Now, when we look at the Shanghai Composite Index, we can see that Shanghai Composite although have a rebound with in the same manner as, it, as the Hang Seng, but it doesn't look quite complete. Over the medium term, I think there is a possibility the market will actually rally back to the 3,226 to 321. Uh, 3,221 levels. So this is the ideal level for the market to rebound to. Uh, market has been rebounding basically on the idea that the uh, Chinese government is actually uh, trying to support the real estate uh, uh, sector. So that is generally viewed as positive 
because uh, from my understanding is that the real estate uh, segment of the economy contributed a big chunk in terms of percentage point to the GDP. So, uh, so if anything that's good for the real estate development uh, uh, sector is definitely viewed as positive for the US, uh, Chinese equities. So with this in mind, I think you want to keep a slightly more bias, the upside kind of look. The NASDAQ Composite Index uh, came, has not opened yet. The market has basically uh, do a rebound, but this rebound has extended uh, deep into my target range of 28,000 to 28,500 levels. So the highest traded last uh, uh, the fortnight ago, that means this is actually traded the uh, not last Friday, but the Friday before that was 28,329. So the market has been coming down a whole lot last week. Uh, there is a possibility market may do a three wave rebound, very similar to what we are seeing in the uh, US equity market. If this is the case, I think there's a likelihood, even though the market can take out the near term support line, I think even if market might come down to 27,000. Uh, 500 to 27,300 levels. If the market doesn't plunge below this level in a very aggressive manner, uh, I think this is a good level to pick up some more uh, uh, a position because I think uh, based on the daily time frame, okay, there is the possibility market will challenge the September high at the very minimum, okay, which is 28,659. Over in the currency itself, we can see the dollar is still basically doing consolidation. Uh, the high traded in dollar yen was of course just under 152. The market went up to all the way to uh, 137.66 and the market basically stabilized. Last week we can see that the market has basically attempted to rally but the rally attempt has been very very cautious. So we can see the market basically drifting. Okay, So there is a possibility going over the next uh, uh, very near term the market may actually rally up to 141 uh to 142 levels i'm actually placing a limit order to sell somewhere within this area and if i can get a good sell price i may uh i may decide that, that this this uh, uh short selling position i'm targeting uh somewhere in the 132 levels okay meaning to say market may actually come down you know complete a five way uh go below 135 and then maybe challenge the 132 levels so this is uh my medium term outlook okay Sterling, I have already gone short. Uh, basically, what happens on Friday was the market actually rallied very close to my target price of 120.60 and then started to drift. So uh, I have seen this. I saw this move here and I decided that I want to sell. So the market actually went down and then come back up. But I'm still very close to my selling price. Um, I'm not underwater yet. So we will see what happens. Ideally, the market go to 120.60. Uh, that will be the most ideal setup. So I'm prepared to actually add new positions to my uh, short selling position. Uh, Euro dollar also having the same pattern. Market is drifting. Maybe it will come back down here before, first before it rally. Uh, the market high was at 104.80, which is last traded on Tuesday, last Tuesday. And uh, we can see the market is basically doing consolidation. This week, uh, most of the market uh, will be focused on the PMI numbers coming in from Germany, coming in from Eurozone. So this could actually influence the price action in the uh, Euro. Uh, to another extent, of course, in the UK, they're also having a, a, a PMI release uh, for the services uh, PMI. So again, all these PMI numbers is going to affect the Euro currencies more than anything else. So do watch out for those. In the Aussie market, I actually went short. Okay, uh, this move here that we saw uh, here, I think this is where I think I went short. Okay, there was an outside bar here. I decided to sell this. The market went down and then go back up, come, come back. So there is this uh, idea that the market may actually drift a bit lower. Uh, I'm prepared to take profit at 0 0.66 levels. And uh, then I will stay flat and watch how the market is going to react. There is this possibility the market will drift lower. Okay. Over in the crude oil, crude oil actually have a big move on Friday. Market actually went down to go to $77.59 before it rebound. And where you can see the low trader on $77.59, the market end up as a reversal pattern. This is where I actually went back in to buy. And uh, yeah, so I'm now long in the crude oil market again. Okay. Over in uh, gold market, market actually drift lower. Uh, it came to challenge this low here at $1,052 and the market went a bit lower before it started to rebound. And when we look at the higher time frame, which is the daily time frame, we can see that the market pulls back up to the 
the retracement level, which is the bare minimum the market can retrace to. And I think this move here is very, very powerful. There's a possibility the market may actually starting to rally uh, back uh, to challenge at $1,800. So I'm basically went long again on the gold market and uh, for a move back to $1,800. So the market can hit this level. I think uh, the $1,800. 808 is going to be the next obvious target, which is the August high. So based on this, if the market can actually cross aggressively beyond this level, the market is more or less having bottom up at $1,016, uh, $1,615. Okay, so I think this is, could be the, the year low uh, for this move. I think the market is gradually get, getting ready to explode to the upside. Now, uh, there will be a lot of options uh, uh, activity that we see in the COMEX futures market for precious metals. And most of the option actually closes on Friday. So uh, they expect some kind of volatility. Of course, going into this week, we have Thanksgiving on Thursday. So do remember Thursday is not a market opening day. And uh, for certain markets, uh, uh, the US market may not even open on Friday itself. So do watch out. This is going to be a very shortened week. The key focus for this week is actually the FOMC meeting, uh, the minutes itself. So that will be released in the early morning hours on Thursday at 2 a.m. So if you want to read or get to know what the uh, uh, the, the various voting, uh, 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 voting members of the Federal Reserve discuss about during the last FOMC meeting before they actually decide to hide the rates 75 basis point. So from the language, you can basically see or maybe extrapolate to get some kind of idea what are the various members thinking. Now, of course, last week, we have a lot of Fed officials coming out to give their opinions. And uh, I think it created even more confusion than clarity because some were saying that maybe we need another 75 basis point rate hike for the last FOMC meeting uh, scheduled for December 14, which is about uh, three weeks from now. Okay, so But there are some who said maybe we should slow down. Maybe we can raise up 50 basis points instead of 75 basis points. But nobody is talking about a cut in interest rates. So the stock market rally has basically been in, uh, based on the idea that the, that the Federal Reserve may pivot, meaning to cut interest rate. So this is definitely not on the table. So this rebound that we see is totally, uh, can be seen as maybe from that perspective, not so sustainable. So I think uh, we want to maintain uh, a, a bias to the downside going into uh, the, the December period. So do watch out. So silver market actually has a rebound Already hitting my target, already hit my target because my original target was twenty one dollars and sixty four cents, and the market went up to twenty two dollars and twenty five cents. So from there, the market actually traced back down. It did not quite challenge the June high, which is twenty two dollars and fifty two cents, and uh, low traded this uh, last week was twenty dollars and seventy six cents. Now, when we go to the lower time frame, the one hour time frame, we can see the market actually is looking like it would drift lower. Okay, uh, it did not quite get into my uh range of but. Uh, buy yet because I'm actually placing a buy limit order to buy some silver. Uh, those orders are still pending and I hope the market may actually drift lower for me to see, uh, to get in, get a foot in into the silver, into the silver uh, market because uh, silver market is going to uh, have a major shortage in the spot market in London. So people are pivoting away uh, into the COMEX market and hoping to hold long position in going into delivery. And I think they will insist on delivery. The warehouse stocks for silver is actually very, very low. So if if we have a, a more, more long position end up in fiscal delivery, that will cause prices of silver to actually skyrocket. So do watch out for the move in silver. I think there's something brewing in the precious metal market. Over in the crypto space, I think the market is pretty quiet after the fiasco, uh, uh, after the FTX uh, implosion. The, for the last two weeks, you can see the market has come down, rebound, and then basically sideline. This morning, we can see there was a spike down uh, in terms of the Bitcoin prices, uh, testing the lower range of the 16,000 levels. Uh, by and large, if this market continue at the current pace where there is hardly any positive news, the market may actually drift lower to 12,000. Uh, dollars for all we know. So do keep an eye out for uh, further losses in the crypto space. Okay, Ethereum similarly, uh, we saw a uh, a push down this morning to test the one thousand one hundred and ten uh, one hundred and uh, one thousand one hundred dollars levels. So we can see that basically the sentiment is pretty pretty poor. So if you can afford not to touch this counter, uh, this space, uh, just monitor. Uh, for me, I have not been. Uh, having any active trading in the crypto space for more than two months now, I basically just watching because I know the market wants to come off. But you ask me to sell a 
this current low low price is a little bit hairy for me so i'd rather not sell and obviously i'm not going to buy yes because there's nothing positive about this space for the moment so this could actually uh, uh, last all the way to the year and hopefully uh, by the 2023 new year uh, we, something else may happen and then we can have more incentive to get back in on the long side for but for now i think the market is drifting okay uh, you can see all the other coins are basically doing the same thing they are just drifting and then drifting lower in fact uh, even the very positive token like Binance coin is also falling okay so we can see that sentiment here is pretty pretty bearish for the time being uh to see how bearish is it you can see Solana this morning actually challenged the low here at twelve dollars and eight cent. This morning low was twelve dollars and ten cent. From the way it looks, I think the market may actually take out the twelve dollars and eight cent um, in no time. So this is a record low. So you want to watch uh this space because this this Solana is closely linked to uh the FTX sister company called uh, Alameda, uh which have exposure in NFT, which of course uses Solana. So of course this basic uh, uh, connection is actually detrimental to Solana for a time being. So there you have it for the time being. This is all I have for you. I hope to see you again tomorrow. And for now, bye-bye.